Welcome to Real Time Recorded, everybody. I'm Zias Caraval from ZK Research, and uh, Dave Michaels is here with me. And Dave, it's week 23. We're almost halfway through the year. Summertime's here. Almost we're halfway. Through Memorial is, Day. Zias, is that a uh, is that a Major League Baseball shirt you're wearing? Uh, it, it seems to me that that's, you do a lot of Major League Baseball at uh, uh, at uh, <laughs> <laughs> at least on Twitter. You do. I don't know what else you do. Yeah, well, I'm a big baseball fan. I you know, I just got back from Extreme User Event. Of course, they're a big uh, MLB sponsor as well. So uh, I've been to quite a few games, so they're, they're kind of fun. So I literally got off the plane a few hours ago, Dave. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, this is one of the first things I'm doing. So, but, uh, um, You know, that, that line for you, I, I literally got off the plane a few hours ago, kind of as one of your persistent lines. Uh, you know, you're, you, you can put that as your status on your uh, uh, messaging apps. But yeah. anyway, let's get into uh, this. This week's week twenty three's news. Um, let's see. The week started off Monday. Monday we got news from uh, Zoom and Genesis. They announced a strategic agreement around Zoom Phone to improve collaboration and customer experience. What did you see that one, Zeus? Yeah, I, I did. Now they already had a partnership uh, going, and uh, from what I understand, this was expanding the use of Zoom Phone to integrate, you know, with Genesis Contact Center. It's, it's fascinating to me, Dave, that when you look at this trend of UC, CC coming together, um, all the UC players are finding a way to have their own contact center, and all the contact center vendors are integrating with the UC players. Um, you can see that down the road there might be some disintermediation coming. TalkDesk, in fact, is the only one that's actually tried to build their own. So, um, but, I, well, that's the, they're the only one on the CCAS side. Obviously, yes. a lot of the UCAS companies... But that's what I meant. The, the UCAS vendors yeah. have all gone on the path of let's build our own or let's get our own. Yeah. And all the CCAS vendors, other than TalkDesk, has chosen to partner. But, uh, uh, you know, this big brings two big brands together and uh, opens up uh, each other's install base, so... I, th I think it's great for particular. I think it's great for Zoom in particular because uh, you know this is bringing the Genesis Salesforce and Genesis accounts to Zoom Phone, and and so that's really good. But but you know there's no there's no loyalty in this business, right? Because just uh, what was it in April? Uh, uh, it was Genesis and Eight by Eight announced a partnership, and so um, uh, so Genesis is trying to solve its. It's a UC puzzle in a variety of ways. They've got 8x8, they've got Zoom Phone, and of course they have Microsoft as well. And I don't even know who else they have, but they've got quite a few. And that's good. They, they want to have, they want to have uh, give customers choice. I think that's good. I was surprised in the Zoom and Genesis announcement there wasn't many details. Because if you look, if you compare it to the, to the April announcement with 8x8, they announced things like uh, secure in-network call transfers. They, they announced uh, unified... Uh, a directory API. They announced single sign-on. They announced um, uh, shared presence, uh, and none of that stuff was in the Zoom announcement. So uh, I don't know if it's just a go-to-market partnership, which is fine, or if it's a, uh, a technical partnership as well. Yeah, to me it looked go-to-market, but I guess like you said, the devil's in the detail. So um, uh, one of the announcements that did come out this week, Dave, that I really liked actually was the Dialpad AI CSAT uh, tool, and this is a it's an interesting. Uh, use of AI and actually I think and just so if you're watching this what it does is it actually listens to the call and it infers what the CSAT of the call would be and of course lots and lots of companies try and get the CSAT metrics no one ever responds to those surveys even I'm sure when you call you know United or whatever and they say will you stay you always say no um, but I think one of the interesting aspects that I liked about this was you know the adoption of CCAS has been strong but because it was just sort of a faster, cheaper way of doing cloud modernization uh, or contact center modernization, but it's arguable that functionality for on-prem and cloud was kind of the same. Now that we're kind of maturing cloud, we're getting to the point where we can start doing things with cloud that we can't do with on-prem, right? And so all these CCAS providers have all this data, they have these machine learning algorithms, and so trying to do this with an on-prem system I think would be very difficult. And so I think, you know, looking ahead, we're likely to see more and more of these AI-based things that make the cloud offerings better than on-prem, and that's that was kind of my takeaway from it. Yeah, well, certainly, you know, AI is changing everything, in, particularly in CCAS, but in, but in UC and meetings as well, and even even messaging with with uh, automated or, or uh, generated responses. But uh, 
But one thing that I notice is that Dialpad just keeps popping up and making news. Dialpad is just plodding along on a very steady basis. Uh, you know, I do that monthly newsletter, and Dialpad's just always just you know steadily making announcements. And and this one's an interesting one. They call it predictive customer intelligence. I like that. Um, and what I don't think a lot of people realize is that Dialpad has been doing voice intelligence for probably one of the longest in the UK space. Uh, I don't remember when they bought Talk IQ. It was quite some time ago. Um, and they've really got a, um, excuse me, I just got a warning here. But uh, uh, they, they, really, they really have a um, uh, lot of experience with, with uh, real-time customer, uh, with, with voice intelligence. Uh, and uh, so they're obtaining the CSAT scores from every voice interaction now, 100% of the calls. That's pretty significant. Uh, it records the call as well, it transcribes the call, and it generates highlights for the call. So that's also pretty significant. And they've been doing this for a long time. And the other thing that's really interesting about this particular arrangement is that Dialpad is a UC company too. So this exact same technology is available on its UCAS customers. So for example, if you had a uh, uh, an outbound sales group that was just using uh, UC uh, services, you could do the same service and, and uh, uh, score each call, 100% of those calls as well. So very, very interesting and, uh, announcement from Dialpad, and I'd just love to see them keeping up the pace. Yeah, they fly under the radar quite a bit compared to some of their, you know, publicly traded uh, uh, competitors. But they've, you're right, they've slowly built themselves a pretty nice business there with a lot of features. And, and they do build a lot of the AI capabilities themselves instead of going to to third parties for it. And so we'll see long term how big a differenti you know, differentiation that makes for them. So our third story for this week is Genesis Experience occurred this week. This was a fairly significant user uh, conference for Genesis. A week, or uh, it's pretty recently, week, week or two after uh, Nice had there. So it's kind of interesting to watch these so close together. Uh, they had a lot of great content and Genesis is doing some incredible things for sure. Uh, they announced some new numbers like 600,000 agents on their cloud platform. And they made three big announcements. I'll just write all them off here and then let uh, Zia's comment on them here. The first one was they launched a new contact center optimization service. It looks really interesting. It's based on their point list acquisition. It's really around visualizing customer journeys, and that's going to come later this year. Uh, they announced a new event stream, which uh, consolidator, uh, notification consolidator, uh, will bring things uh, together like uh, Adobe and um, uh, Google and Nuance, uh, their voice partners, et cetera, into one notification stream. That should be pretty helpful. And then thirdly, I think uh, most probably most significantly, it was a new standalone workforce engagement solution. They've been building out their workforce engagement for quite some time now, but it's been tied to their products. And so now they're going to offer that to third-party contact centers as well. Uh, Zias, any comments on that stuff so far? Well, the, you know, the, in, the individual answers are kind of interesting. I, I think the, the bigger theme here, though, is that they're, working to, you know, and this is really something across the industry, everyone's working to, to simplify, you know, agent experience and make customer interactions shorter. And I think this, again, is uh, something that will continue to stay in the industry. It's, there's not a, a company that I talk to where the amount of data coming into their employees is overwhelming their employees. And that's certainly the case in the contact center. So if you've got multiple streams, if you've got, you know, things like that. So, um, you know, I think, it, you know, that's, where I would expect the innovation to be, uh, you know, and I think we, we've talked about this before, you know, the importance of making things simple and the importance of experience, because that's really become the new differentiator, right? The, uh, you know, the, you can attach yourself to different apps and things, but if you're making the human, the integration point, um, you know, that's generally a recipe for failure. And, and especially now that agents are working from home, more and more of that stuff has to be automated because you don't have somebody looking over an agent's shoulder helping them try to understand what that means. So that, that, uh, that you know, when I looked at them in aggregate, that's kind of, kind of what I took away. Yeah, I, I think those are good points. And, you know, I, I also want to highlight for them the momentum. They're just keeping up their momentum. They're doing some good work there. And I, I like to see that steady pace of momentum. Genesis is, you know, probably the only one of the, uh, the, the big contact center vendors of the, uh, the, the premises-based contact center or the legacy-based contact center vendors that is still really innovating its platform, uh, its legacy architecture. And of course, they don't call it a legacy architecture. They call it a multi-cloud. But, but it's, it's a significant platform, and it's, and, it's, and it's important because like Cisco and Avaya, which are the primary competitors in that space, they're much more focused, it feels like, on the pure cloud, or I shouldn't say pure cloud. I, I should say the CCAS uh, um, 
uh, versions of their contact centers, and where Genesis has really seems to be fairly balanced still and, and innovating on both. And I, I think that's important because, a large, as you know, a large, of, a large number of large enterprises are still preferring the, the legacy-based or the private cloud type of solutions, and they've done a fantastic job of updating that. Um, I, I also wanted to highlight, you know, because I mentioned the NICE one was last week, the NICE conference, where they called Interactions 22. This was Experience 22. Uh, you know, so close together, kind of watching them back to back. Uh, NICE, their, their buzzword was frictionless, and they really want a frictionless experience for the customers. Genesis's buzzword and theme of their event was empathy. And I thought that was really interesting, the way they talk, talk, talked about empathy. It's the It's the... Uh, the magic word at, at Genesis, uh, Tony Bates, the CEO, just published a book called Empathy in Action. Uh, it was heavily throughout his keynote, uh, keynote, uh, the CEO keynote. And, and uh, it was kind of strange to me, Zias, they used a, um, a uh, mountain climbing metaphor. Or he used a mountain climbing metaphor in his, in his keynote. And he talked about mount empathy, and he talked about there's multiple ways to climb it. You can climb it through the EX side or the CX side or the WEM side or whatever. You know, there's multiple ways to summit this mountain. Uh, but he says it needs a guide, and he, you know, he was proposing Genesis as the guide, which, okay, that makes sense. Uh, but this is where I got lost. He says he compared, he compared it to Mount Everest, and he said Mount Empathy is harder than Mount Everest. And he said that even if you have a guide, 50% fail on Mount Everest, and that 50% is a new and improved number. And it's like, okay, so 50% fail on, on Mount Everest, and Mount Empathy is harder, I... It, it seems like they're saying more than 50% of their, of their customers are going to fail climbing Mount Empathy, which I don't think was what they meant to say, but it was kind of a strange metaphor. Uh, you know, I, I got lost, but again, I was listening critically, and maybe, maybe uh, I'm not supposed to listen critically, but isn't that what empathy is about? I, I, I found the whole thing a little confusing there. Yeah, that is a strange analogy because a lot of people die on the way up Mount Everest, right? So <laughs> it's like that doesn't come to their customers. So. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, that uh, wraps up, I think, week 23 for us. Uh, we'll be back next week. There's a pretty big event that you and I will be at next week. So uh, I guess we'll uh, be talking about Cisco Live and some of the WebEx innovation there next week, Dave. Very good. Until then.